I'd now like to invite uh, Mr. Chen Zhangguang, who is the, um, the Vice Secretary General of CLIA. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, very good to be here to give a brief introduction on China leather and the footwear uh, industry. Uh, the, uh, I will introduce three uh, topics. Uh, overview of China leather and footwear industry, uh, changes and, uh, challenges and opportunities facing the industry, uh, prospects of the industry. Okay, and now let's see the first topic, overview of China leather and footwear industry. Uh, the chart in this slide is the developing index of leather and footwear industry. It shows the performance of the uh, industry in the past five years. The figure of a y-axis is developing index, which indicates the developing leaders of China leather and footwear industry. The figure from 90 to 111 means the developing status is normal, and the figure over 111 means the overheated development, and the le uh, less than 90 means cooling development. From this chart, we can see in the past five years, the developing index curve moved down year by year, which suggested the industry's slower growth, especially the curve downwarded evidently in the first half of 2015, which indicated the leather industry is being in hard time. Now let's see the industry's performance in 2014. Uh, from uh, this slide, we can see the growth rate of main economic indicators slower to single digits. For example, the sales revenue rose by 9% year on year. Uh, to 200 billion US dollars. As to the uh, export and import, uh, the growth rate of export value continued to slide and closed at 89 billion US dollars with a year-on-year -year growth rate of 7%. And the import uh, value rose by 10.7% year-on-year to 8.4 billion US, dollar, US dollars. Now let's see the performance of China leather industry uh, in the first half of this year. Uh, firstly, uh, let's see uh, the, this slide, uh, the four charts. Uh, they, show, uh, they showed the change trend of de developing index, revenue index, export index, and profit index from May 2014 to May 2015. We can see from the charts, except for the export index thing in the normal area, other three index have entered into the cool area, especially the profit status is very bad. Uh, now, uh, we can know much more of these status through the uh, main economic indicators in the first half of this year. Uh, the sales revenue rose by 6.5% year on year to 100 billion US dollars. A growth rate down some four percentage point. The growth rate of exports continued to slide and closed at 41 billion US dollars with a year-on-year -year growth rate of 4%, down about two percentage point. Next up, let's see the two main sub-industries, uh, the tanning industry and the footwear industry. Let's see the tanning industry firstly. The tanning industry is in 2014 performed not well. Uh, Skill tanneries produced about 600 million square meters of finished leather, up by 0.6% year on year. This slide shows production of finished leather in different provinces in China. The top, uh, the top one is Zhejiang province, accounting for 23%, followed by Hebei province, Henan province, and Fujian province accounting for 21%, 16%, 9% respectively. Then let's see the import of uh, the highest semi-finished leather and finished leather in 2014. This table showed that the import of them 
decreased both in volume and value, which indicated that the uh, poor performance of the whole leather industry. In the first half of the year 2015, the tanning industry was still in tight spot. Skilled tannery produced about 290 million square meters of finished leather, failing by 0.9% year on year. The total profit achieved 76 million square, uh, US dollars, declining about 1%. And uh, the import of hide semi finished leather and finished leather also reflected the leather industry still in a weird situation. Uh, then let's see the footwear industry. In the past one and a half years, like the whole industry, the footwear industry performed not good enough. The growth rate of main indicators decreased year on year. In, 2004, in 2014, skilled footwear enterprises achieved sales revenue of 110 billion US dollars, rising 10%, down a half percentage point. Among the total footwear enterprises, about 59% of leather footwear companies, uh, their revenue account for 65% of the whole revenue of the footwear industry. This pie chart shows the revenue of footwear industry in different provinces in 2014. The top one is Fujian province, accounting for 34%, followed by Guangdong province, Zhejiang province, and Jiangsu province, accounting for 20%, 11%, and 16%, respectively. As to the export, the growth rate of footwear export slightly climbed. Footwear exports totaled 10.7 billion pairs and 40, 54 billion US dollars with export value up 2% and 13% respectively. Among the exported footwear, the leather footwear witnessed double-digit double digit growth in both export value and value, uh, volume. Exports of leather shoes totaled near 1 billion pairs by value and 14 billion US dollars by value, rising 11% and 14% respectively. At the same time, the imports of Footwear increased considerably in 2014. Footwear imports, footwear imports totaled seven, uh, seven, uh, 73 million pairs with a value of 2 billion US dollars, rising to 32% and 20% respectively. Among the total imposed shoes, leather shoes accounted for 43% and 43 in uh, volume. Among the total imported shoes, leather shoes accounted for 43% in volume and 67% in value. So the uh, leather uh, sh imports are dominate, dominated by leather shoes. I just uh, introduced the export of uh, footwear, the international market. Then. Uh, let's see the uh, consumption of uh, footwear in domestic market. Here I introduced the retail market firstly. The growth rate of total domestic retail declined and footwear retail witnessed a slower growth rate. The above chart is change trend of the growth rate of retail sales of social consumer goods in the past years. Retail sales of Consul, uh, social consumer goods rose by 12% in 2014, hitting a new low in the past 10 years, among which the growth rate of garments, shoes, and caps was 11%, also hitting the new low in the past 10 years. The below chart is the growth rate of shoes and caps sales in 3,000 major retailers from 2011 to 2014. Uh, 3,000 major retailers monitored by the Ministry of Commerce witnessed a growth rate of 5% in sales of shoes and caps, which consistently fell in the past four years. 
The retail market performed not very good. However, the e-commerce market has become the new point of growth in the industry. On the whole, e-business is on the rapid upward canal. In 2014, the online retail sales reached about 40, 440 billion US dollars, which rose by 50% year on year. At the same time, the mobile e-business uh, and the cross-border e-business and the WeChat business are developing rapidly, which will further promote the e-business in China. And the e-business will play a more and more important role in the domestic market. Then let's see the performance of footwear industry in the, in the first half of 2015. Just like the performance of the whole industry, the growth rate of footwear industry dropped further. And the situation of uh, the leather footwear industry showed the same as whole footwear industry. The sales revenue of the uh, skilled leather footwear company reached about reached about 35 billion US dollars, up 5%, growth rate declining 3% percentage point. The production of leather footwear is 2.1 billion shoes, increasing 2%. And the export is about 40, 410 million pairs of leather footwear with export value of 5.8 billion US dollars, decreasing 6% and 2% respectively. And the import uh, shoes is uh, about 15 million pairs, of, million pairs with import value of uh, 623 million US dollars, up 23% and 8% respectively. And then uh, let's see the second topic, the opportunities and the challenges facing the industries. Along with the development of China and worldwide economic, China leather and footwear industry has been faced with a lot of challenges as follows. Uh, I just uh, introducing six uh, uh, challenges. The first one is increasing factor costs. Second is gradually weakened late developing advantage. Three is introduce industries and transferred overseas. The fourth is great pressure from environment protection. Fifth is diversification of shoes, uh, the sales canals. The sixth is rapidly changing a foreign trade environment. Because of limited time, I just uh, I will not give a brief uh, detailed information to everyone. Uh, however, I will uh, say something on environment protection. The reasonable, uh, I think the reasonable requirements for environment protection should be fully compli complied with. However, nowadays there is an increasing number of unreasonable and unscientific requirements. For example, unreasonable requirements for pollutant emission, and reasonable restrictions on chemical substances in leather products, which sometimes see, seem to be imposed to play to the gallery. At the same time, tenders in China encountered another policy problem. The tiny industry has been deemed to be the heavy metal pollution industry because of chrome. The wet blue shavings and scraps was listed into the hazardous waste substances list. This is attributed to the misunderstanding of chromium. Our association is organizing forces in all aspects to clarify, clarify that the chrome for leather industry is chrome three, not chrome six, and try best to take the wet blue shavings and scraps out of the hazardous waste web substances list. However, the environmental department often replied us that the chrome cis can be detected out in waste water and sometimes with a high figure, more than 1,000 ppm, very high. A lot of experiments, so we think it is impossible. And a lot of experiments have been done by the lab and tenneries in China which showed that some defect existed in the detection method for Chrome 6. And the detection figure is easily affected by the color in the detected object. And this is a very big problem for China leather industry. I think uh, for, uh, it's also uh, a big problem for the worldwide 
in uh, lead industry. Okay, let's see uh, the uh, opportunities. Uh, we think uh, in China, we have a lot of opportunities for the development of China leather and footwear industry. Uh, for example, the growing population around the world, uh, wide, world uh, and in China, long-term steady growth in the world's economy and the rapid development of China economy, uh, upgrade of consumption and the domestic market, comprehensive advantages of the industrial chain and continuously optimized industry distribution, opportunities of growing of brought by the strategy of one bed and one road, upgrade of environmental protection, innovation driven development as well as scientific and technology progress uh, and adjustment of uh, relevant national policies. Uh, because of the limited time, I will not uh, explain them in detail. Uh, at last, I will uh, give a brief introduction of the uh, prospect of the China leather and footwear industry. Uh, now, it's very, uh, we all know it is a very, time, very hard time uh, nowadays for leather and footwear industry. And this situation may be sustained for some long time. However, on the whole, in the medium and the long term, the opportunities for China leather and footwear industry outweigh the challenges. Prospects uh, are still relatively positive for the China leather and footwear industry. Uh, it is expected that in 2015, the industry in China will sustain the momentum of growth in 2014. The sales revenue, profits, and exports are expected to maintain a single-digit growth, growth rate and will not get a sharp decline from that of last year. Thank you. <laughs>